Now we'll look at the cholinergic antagonists. They will antagonize the action of acetylcholine both at the muscarinic and the nicotinic receptors. They are classified into those acting on the muscarinic receptors and those acting on the nicotinic receptors. The antimuscarinics are competitive blockers at the muscarinic receptors and they can be further divided into those that are natural alkaloids by their nature, those that are semi-synthetic derived from the natural alkaloids and the others which are synthetic. We look at the first natural alkaloid that is atropine. It is the prototype drug. In the GIT it will oppose muscarinic actions and cause constipation. In the glands it will decrease secretion. The bladder tone will be decreased leading to urinary retention. The bronchial smooth muscles will relax. The sweat gland secretion will also decrease or diminish leading to hyperthermia. In the eye there will be passive midriasis. Now it is called passive midriasis because it is not due to sympathetic stimulation but due to a cholinergic blockade. It will also cause paralysis of ciliary muscle leading to loss of accommodation due to blockade of M3 receptors and also the light reflex will be lost because the sphincter pupillae muscle cannot contract in response to parasympathetic activation. In the heart, it will cause initial bradycardia due to M1 autoreceptor blockade at the vagal nerve endings and at therapeutic doses, it will cause tachycardia due to M2 receptor blockade. In the central nervous system, it will deal with the tremor and rigidity that is associated with increased acetylcholine uh, level in the brain and will have anti-Parkinsonian effect. Now, in case of uh, poisoning with atropine, it can be completely antagonized by physostigmine because it can cross CNS as well. It has good gut absorption and also it can be used topically in the eye as a midriatic. It is metabolized in the liver and excreted in the urine. The next natural alkaloid is scopolamine which is same in the properties as atropine. It can cause CNS depression such as sedation and amnesia and on the vestibular apparatus it will block the M1 receptor and thus will have anti-motion sickness effect. That's why it is the drug of choice uh, for motion sickness and can be used orally as well as a transdermal patch. It will cause dryness of mouth and sedation as a side effect. The semi-synthetic antimuscarinic agents can be remembered by the mnemonic HIT and include homotropine, eprotropium bromide and tiotropium bromide. Homatropine is similar to atropine in its action and is used as a midriatic. Eprotropium bromide and tiotropium bromide are used mainly in asthma and COPD due to their action on the M3 receptors by blocking them they will block smooth muscle uh, constriction and thus block bronchospasm as well as decrease the secretion of bronchi. We'll classify the synthetic ones on the basis of their uses. Those used as midriatics are tropicamide and cyclopentolate. We can remember them by the mnemonic my troops on cycles. My for midriatic, troops for tropicamide and cyclopentolate cycle. Tropicamide is the shortest acting and is preferred in OPDs. Cyclopentolate has a long action, 24 hours. They can be used in refraction testing, fundoscopic exam, and iridocyclitis to prevent adhesions between the iris and the lens. Next are the drugs that are used as anti-secretory and anti-spasmodic. Anti-secretory effect can be used in cyaluria and peptic ulcer disease, while the anti-spasmodic effect can be used in dysmenorrhea, intestinal colic, and renal colic. Now those that are specifically used for peptic ulcer can be remembered by the uh, mnemonic, pyrenzepine gave a clean pro-peptoc. Pyrenzepine for pyrenzepine of course, clean for clidinium, pro for propanthaline and peptoc for peptic ulcer. Apart from these, 
The others can be classified into those having a quaternary structure and those having a tertiary structure. The quaternary ones are propanthaline, oxyphenonium, pepenzolate, and clidinium, while the tertiary structured are perenzipine, velithamate, and dicyclomene. The next ones that can be used in Parkinson's disease as anti-Parkinsonians, they will decrease the acetylcholine and thus prevent the tremor and rigidity that is associated with increased acetylcholine in Parkinsonism. They include the drugs benzhexol, procyclidine and benztropine. This can be remembered by the mnemonic Parkinson's troops are on benz cycles. Now my troops were on simple cycles while Parkinson's troops are very fancy and they have benz cycles. Some of these synthetic uh, anticholinergics are vesicoselective that is they are selective for the bladder and can be used to relieve the spasm that is there after surgery and to deal with urinary incontinence. They include the drugs oxybutynin, flavoxate, tolterodine and darifenacin. These drugs and their functions can be remembered by the mnemonic Dairy could not tolerate the ox-flavored ice cream, and I think he had good reason not to. Nobody would like an ox-flavored ice cream. Anyway, ox stands for oxybutynin, flavor for flavoxate, tolterodine for tolerate, dairy for darifenacin, and vesicoselective, IC in the vesico, stands for the ice cream. Lastly, we have the category of miscellaneous or the extras or the dustbin actually. And it includes one drug that is drotaverine or you might have heard NOSPA and it is used as an antispasmodic but by a different mechanism of action and is not a cholinergic antagonist. It acts by inhibiting phosphodiesterase enzyme. Now if you look at the word drotaverine, the drota in drotaverine sounds like dota. So the mnemonic I made for this one is all those who play Dota are extras. And I mean no offense to all those who like Dota, but it just came to my mind and then I could not ignore it. But even if you are offended, it's a good thing because all those things that are associated with the negative emotion tends to have a long impression in our brains. So even if you are not a fan of Dota, make sure you're offended. Coming to the anti-nicotinic drugs, they are classified into those acting on the ganglia, that is, on the NN type of receptor, and those acting on the skeletal muscles NM receptor. We'll first see the blockers of the NN receptor, or the ganglion blockers, because we know that NN receptors are present on the ganglion. One fact is that regardless of the ganglion being a parasympathetic ganglion or the sympathetic ganglion, always has an N type of receptor. So if I give a ganglion blocker, that means I will shut down both the parasympathetic and the sympathetic reflexes and the whole autonomic nervous system or outflow will be blocked. Now in that case, what will be the organs normally controlled by the ANS controlled by? That is something to think about. The answer to this is that the effect produced by ganglion blockers will depend on the fact that which division of the autonomic nervous system provides the dominant baseline control for a given organ. For example, the arterioles are mainly controlled by the sympathetic nervous system and if the ganglion blockers are there, this will lead to dilation that, that means the sympathetic nervous system will be opposed. Same is the case for the veins. In the heart, the main control is by the parasympathetic nervous system and when that is removed by administering ganglion blockers, that means the heart rate will increase. And so is the case for all the other organs including iris, which will cause midriasis, ciliary muscle causing cycloplegia, GI causing constipation, bladder retention, salivary glands leading to xerostomia, and sweat glands inhibition leading to anhydrosis. If you pay attention, I've written fixed with both the increased heart rate and the midriasis. 
the reason for that is this heart rate this increased heart rate is fixed this tachycardia is fixed and will not lead to reflex bradycardia because you know who mediates these uh, reflexes the autonomic nervous system so when you've blocked the autonomic nervous system you don't expect to have a reflex bradycardia in case of the tachycardia that you've produced and same is the case for the midriasis you cannot ex expect uh, the autonomic nervous system to cause meiosis because you've wiped out all the autonomic reflexes lastly the drugs acting on the nm type that is the skeletal muscle nicotinic receptors will be described in skeletal muscle relaxants